Okay, now we're going to talk about Chapter 4, Closing Entries. On the left over here, you see the adjusted trial balance of net solutions. So, all of the November and December transactions from Chapter 2 have been journalized and posted to the T accounts. The adjusting entries from Chapter 3 have also been journalized and posted to the T accounts. And now, we see all of the results of all of those transactions and adjusting entries over here in the adjusted trial balance. Notice that the accounts are in order. First we see our assets, all up there. Then we see our liabilities. Then we see our equity accounts. After that come the revenue accounts. And then come our expense accounts. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a mental line between Chris Clark Capital and Chris Clark Drawing. What's going to happen is all of the accounts above the line that you see over here, I'm going to color them in yellow, those are our permanent accounts. I call them the Energizer Bunny accounts. Why? Because they just keep going and going and going. So if you think about maybe the T account for Bank of America for cash, it might be miles long, but it's never closed and reopened again. We just keep adding transactions to the bottom. So our assets, liability, and some of our equity accounts work like that. Now for the accounts at the bottom that I'm going to color in green, Those are what are known as temporary accounts. So our revenues and our expenses are known as temporary accounts. If they weren't temporary, fees earned would be all the fees earned since the time the company was organized, and wages expense would be all the wages expense from the beginning on. So accountants found that that's not very good information. So what they want to do is they want only the current period revenues and expenses, normally the current year, revenues and expenses in the accounts, and then at the end of the year the accounts are closed. We also close the drawing account into capital. For a corporation that would be dividends closing into retained earnings. Why do we use a separate drawing account? If you had a partner, would you want to know how much money they're taking out of the business? You certainly would. So, in accounting, every time we want good information about something, we set it up as an account. Alright, so let's now go through the closing process. Remember, we're going to close our revenues and our expenses, and Chris Clark Drawing, all of them are going to be closed into Chris Clark Capital. So, let's go here. Now, on the left-hand side, I have all of those balances from the adjusted trial balance, in the T accounts, and now let's go through the four steps of the closing entries. Compared to chapters two and three, this is relatively easy because closing entries come straight from the adjusted trial balance. You really don't have to think much about it. So step one is to close the revenues to income summary. When you think close, I want you to think opposite. Notice that all of our revenues have credit balances. So you can see here, rent revenue has a $120 credit balance. Fees earned has a $16,840 credit balance. To close it, we want it to have a zero balance. So in accounting, when you think close, think opposite. So for the first journal entry to close revenues to income summary, what we want to do is we want to debit fees earned, $16,840. That would close that account. Then we want to debit rent revenue, 120. That would close that account. That account would be zero. And notice I have this new account down here at the end called income summary. Income summary is the most temporary of accounts. It's only going to exist during the closing process. So we can see up here the journal entry for step one. We're going to debit fees earned, 16840 we're going to debit rent revenue 120 and we're going to credit income summary for the total of all revenues 16,960 so right now I'm going to post that so I'm going to debit fees earned 16,840 
Notice that account now has a zero balance. It's been increased and decreased by 16840. I'm going to de debit rent revenue 120. So again, notice that account is closed. Now I'm going to credit income summary 16960, which is the total of all revenues. Okay, now we've journalized and posted step one close the revenues to income summary and after we've done that notice each one of our revenue accounts now has a zero balance. Now we go on to step two. Step two is to close our expenses to income summary. So notice each one of our expenses has a debit balance. That is the normal balance of an expense, a debit. So to close that expense we're going to need to credit. So yes, we need to credit each and every expense account. You can't take a shortcut and say credit all expenses because each one of those accounts has to have a zero balance. In order for each one of those accounts to have a zero balance, we have to hit each one of them with this journal entry. So in our step two, what we're going to do is we're going to debit income summary for the total of all expenses and then credit each one of our expense accounts one by one. So here we're going to debit income summary 9855. Then in the second line we're going to credit wages expense 4525. We are going to credit rent expense for $1,600. We are going to credit depreciation expense for $50. We are going to credit utilities expense for $985. We are going to credit supplies expense for $2,040. We are going to credit insurance expense for $200. And we credit miscellaneous expense for $455. Now we've completely posted step two and notice all of our revenue and expense accounts now have zero balances. Each one of the accounts has been increased and then decreased by the same amount so there's a zero balance and what we've done is transfer the balances to income summary. Now I want you to think about this income summary for a moment think about the name of the income summary account for a moment because on the credit side we have the total of all of the revenues and on the debit side we have the total of all the expenses well in accounting there's no other definition of income other than revenues minus expenses so income summary really summarizes the income it doesn't give you the details but it gives you the total revenue and the total expenses so you can calculate your net income. So in step three what we want to do is we want to close income summary to Chris Clark Capital. If this were a corporation step three would be exactly the same but instead of closing income summary to Chris Clark Capital we would close income summary to an account called retained earnings. We'll be studying corporations in part two of this class ACC 122. So now you're going to notice in the income summary account we've increased that account 16960 and decreased it by 9855 so what we want to do to close that account is debit it for the difference. So again to close that account we want total debits to equal total credits. So we take 16960 excuse me subtract 9855 and we get 7105. So what we're going to do is we're going to debit income summary for 7105. Once we do that we have 16960 of credits, 16960 of debits and the account is now closed and we're going to credit Chris Clark Capital 7105. Okay, so now you can see here that we've closed all of the revenue accounts and all of the expense accounts.
we have one final step in the process. Now we're going to close the drawing account to Chris Clark Capital. Chris Clark Drawing is a temporary equity account, just like dividends for a corporation is a temporary equity account. It's just there because we want to know how much the drawing is and how much the dividends is, but at the end we want to close it into the capital account. So to close Chris Clark Drawing to make it a zero, we're going to have to credit that account. So since our journal entry is debit, we're going to debit Chris Clark Capital and of course it makes sense that taking out money would reduce the capital account. So in our final journal entry, step four, close drawing to Chris Clark Capital. We're going to debit Chris Clark Capital for 4000 and credit Chris Clark Drawing 4000 Now we have posted all of our closing entries and we can see right here that everything after Chris Clark Capital has a zero balance just like what I said at the beginning that all of the green accounts that we see over here on the adjusted trial balance at the end of closing will have a zero balance. So the final step is to do a post-closing trial balance. A post-closing trial balance will have only the accounts that have positive balances. We're not going to show our revenues and expenses because they have a zero balance. We're going to calculate the ending balance in Chris Clark Capital. If I take 25000 add 7105, and subtract 4000 I wind up with an ending balance in Chris Clark Capital of 28105. So now I'm going to prepare my post-closing trial balance. which I have already done. And you can see here that we did not change cash. It's still 2065. Accounts receivable, 2720. Supplies, prepaid insurance, land, office equipment. Accumulated depreciation is on the credit side. Accounts payable, wages payable, unearned rent. All of our assets and liabilities are there. And then we have Chris Clark Capital, 28105 the balance after all of the closing entries have been posted and once again notice that all of our revenues and expenses now have a zero balance. So now what we're ready to do is we're ready to begin recording transactions for January now that the end of the year has been closed. Hopefully this helps you to understand closing entries a little better. Just one final note if Net Solutions had had a loss, the journal entry would have been reversed from the step four we, that we saw before. We would have had to credit income summary and debit Chris Clark Capital because the loss actually increases the value of the owner's stake in the account. So even if there's a net loss, the closing entries would still work. Just that step three would be backwards where we debit Chris Clark Capital and credit income summary. Okay, once again, hopefully this helps you to understand the closing entries a little more. Watch for my recordings on uh, classified balance sheet and multi-step income statement.